Good morning and welcome to Lincoln Cathedral for this Sung Eucharist. Um, I have some good news for you and that is to say that from Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, as we begin to mark and observe Lent, we will begin a phased return of public worship to the cathedral and there will be a service at 7.30pm that day on Wednesday, uh, which the public, you, are most welcome to come and join in in the nave of the cathedral and all the usual observations of masks and social distancing will be in place. Um, in order to find out what public worship is available from then on, would you like to make inquiries either um, through the chapter office or you can look on the website, which is the obvious place to go first. And next Sunday, there will be worship in the cathedral at 7.45, Litany, 8 o'clock Holy Communion, Book of Common Prayer, and a 10 a.m. Sun Eucharist. So that's some good news for us as we can gather together as a community. And you can also find out information about our Lent address on Fridays and the communions during the week on the website. Particularly, I would draw your attention to the fact that on Friday there will be a Eucharist at 12.30 p.m with a dress at the St. Hugh's Shrine. So as we begin and um, prepare for worship this morning, we pray together. Most merciful God, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. O keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have put my trust in you. Lord, have mercy. Mighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
mighty Father whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Second book of Kings, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he said, the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle, and rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching them, crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into pieces. This is the word of the Lord.
reading from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen, until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
pray that I may speak in the name of the one God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Each of today's readings say something to us of God's transfiguring presence. In their different ways, each reading may help us to see how we can approach God a God who yet remains veiled from our sight. We hear of Elisha being taken to the edge of human experience as he accompanies Elijah to the point where he is wrapped up in the heavenly presence, described using the vivid image of the whirlwind. Paul talks of the way that pure light can blind and leads us to understand that in the very humanity of the face of Jesus, we can come to know the light of the love that is God. That in the glory of Christ, we encounter the very image of God. And in our Gospel reading, we heard of the experience of those who were closest to Christ, encountering the fullness of his glory. In each of these encounters, we see that in meeting God, those who are present are unavoidably changed. They view things differently. They are transfigured, so that things once familiar are seen in a different light, in the light of God. Each of us in our own lives might hope to encounter something of the glory of God ourselves. However, so often we find ourselves distracted by the immediate concerns that can crowd around us and find that God is not able to speak to us as he might. And we find that God remains veiled from our sight by the concerns and the fears of this world, rather than revealed in our openness to his voice in our lives. So often, Lent, which we enter this coming week, becomes a time for giving things up, depriving ourselves so that we can come closer to God. I suspect that each of us from time to time finds that in the course of Lent we are focusing so much on the things we have given up that our mind is distracted from the more important task of opening our hearts to God. For many of us, as we approach this particular Lent, there, are, there is already so much that has been given up. So perhaps we should ask ourselves whether this Lent we are called to give up even more, or whether we might instead, be a, it might instead be a time for us to look at things in a different way. Perhaps we are called to look at things to see how they may be transfigured for us, how we might see the image of God present with us. As a cathedral community, we too have been stripped back our life as community has itself been deprived. In a way, we share something of the far more personal way that individuals have been deprived of so many things over these past weeks and months. For several weeks, the life of the Cathedral Church itself has been stripped back to its barest, to the continuing round of prayer and worship offered daily by the Cathedral Foundation for and on behalf of the community, and being open as a place where people can come each day and offer their personal prayers. But so much has been missing. The gathering of community in worship, the encounter of visitors of, with something of God in this holy place, the welcoming of groups from the wider community in celebration. For the cathedral community, something of our normal routine will begin to return from Ash Wednesday as we look forward to gathering in public worship once again. But this is still far from normal. It is so far from normal, and it is so easy to dwell on what is missing, what we are lacking. However, we might be reminded in all of this that it was in Christ surrendering himself that God became known. As Paul writes elsewhere, Christ emptied himself, 
he humbled himself. And still it was in his humanity that the image of God is made known to us. In the same way, our lives as individuals and our life as a church has been emptied of so much that is normal. And it must be our prayer that in this we all have encountered something of God, something that might otherwise have been hidden from us. Over the past few months, I know that many have discovered the importance of things that were previously hidden amidst the busyness of daily life. There are many stories of people who have realised the importance of family or friends in a way that they hadn't done before. The presence of the beauty of creation in nature, the needy neighbour alongside them, and the generous stranger. It has been the same in our community life. We have come to realise the importance of prayer, of offering worship, of being a place for people to come at a time of need. We become aware of the need for people to gather, bringing with them the obvious needs of the wider communities from which we come. In the absence of the normal, it has perhaps been possible that things have been transfigured, so that things once familiar are seen in a different light, in that light of God. In each of the accounts that we heard in our readings, the importance of the transforming encounter with God is not that people were stuck there, that they stayed in that moment with God, but that they returned to the normal, unable to be as they had been before. Having encountered the image of God, they are unavoidably called to see things differently, to see things transfigured and transformed by God's presence. As the days, and then weeks, and probably months move on, we will be able to start to resume something of the normal routines of daily life. And for us as a Christian community, at Easter we hopefully will be able to rejoice at being able to sing Alleluia. We will find much to rejoice in as we remake our lives with many of the things that were once familiar, but have been missed now for so long. But as we do so, we are called to return to those things we have missed, transfigured and changed. To appreciate what we have missed, and to come before God changed by that experience. As I hope we will be able to rejoice in joining others in prayer and worship this Lent, so I hope that we will reach Easter, ready to sing once again, Alleluia. But it is my prayer that this will be a different Alleluia. An Alleluia not only said with our lips, but an Alleluia that flows from our hearts. An Alleluia that is transfigured by our own encounter with the image of God. And it is my prayer that this Lent we might prepare to sing that Alleluia. That this Lent will not be a time of forced emptiness but a time when we find ourselves made ready, a time when a light may shine out of darkness. Alleluia. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all that he has seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to God, whose glory is revealed through the Church to all the world. May your wonderful light transfigure the Church, changing human weakness into divine strength. Bless and inspire Christopher, our Bishop, and all who serve your Church in this city and diocese. blessing on this cathedral, as its clergy and its choir minister to your people in extraordinary circumstances. Keep us faithful in this generation to the mission of preaching and prophecy which we have received from those who went before us in the faith and have left us their example. will be hidden beneath the cares and struggles of the world. May the light of your knowledge and trust inspire leaders of countries, counties and communities, especially as they should seek with your inspiration to keep all your people safe from disease, poverty and danger. In concern for the present time, Grant that the wisdom of the past shall not be forgotten as a guide to people and nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. As we seek to follow you, enable us also to lead others towards you. We thank you for the joy and completeness found by two people in mutual and tender love. Be with those whose relationships are strained, or in trouble, or which has reached an end. And for all those who suffer abuse of any kind within the home. Shine with the light of your truth upon us, our families and friends and neighbours. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Have mercy on all who have suffered the loss of one whom they loved and trusted. Comfort them with the assurance of new life to come. Bring your healing grace to those who are ill, and give strength to those who care for them. 
we remember especially Elizabeth Ann Phillips, Jennifer Lowther, Iver and Gaynor George Jones, Alan Jones, Gillian Jolly, Nick Chambers, Sheila Blanchard, Clarissa Turner, Richard Annetts, Carla Robinson, Catherine Anderson, Adrian Morton, and Anne Muse. Strengthen them to continue their lives in this world according to your will for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have gone from this world into your nearer presence. Remembering Jocelyn Russell, Murdoch Allen, Eileen Smith, Ken Hughes, Canon Jane Sinclair, Michael Lawler, Helen Walker, Robert Fish, and Anne Gallivan. In the light of heaven, may they join the praise given by your worshippers through all the ages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray in the name of Christ, revealed in glory to his disciples throughout all ages. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy, that you may be kept safe and blameless in spirit, soul and body, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Let us pray. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so Lord may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen.
we praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, shared it with them, and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took a cup of wine. Again, he gave you thanks, shared it, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. to work together for that day when your justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth and your kingdom comes. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary the Virgin, Hugh of Lincoln and all the saints to be with you forever at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be. For those of you worshipping with us online, I invite you to make your spiritual communion, praying that by God's grace, united with all the baptised and with Christ, who gave his life for us, you may be filled with his indwelling presence.
Let us pray. Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partakers at his table reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet, prepared for all peoples. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.